So in the previous video, we saw how to create this, this data frame here that had the total purchased by each customer. And I used a for loop to do this. It turns out there's actually a better and probably more Pythonic way to do this. And it uses some things that are built in by pandas. So I have this sales data frame here and I can tell it to group by a particular column using the by keyword argument. In this case, I'll group it by uh, not line items, but rather by names because I want to group it by the customer. After this, uh, there are two things that I can do. I could either add a, an aggregation function specifically here, and then I'll just use a string and for sum. And we'll see basically the same thing. Now, this is, of course, using different names and values because I've refreshed the notebook since the previous video, but the concept is still the same. And the other way that I could do this is I could just call sum. I'll get the same thing. Now, this is still a data frame. So if I put a uh, sales group, not gales, but uh, sales totals. And then I look for the type of sales totals. You'll see it is still a data frame. And if I look at my variables down here, if I look at my sales totals here, it is a data frame. And I can view it here. Now it's kind of difficult to see things like, okay, who's the top or who is the least um, when you're just looking at the numbers. So maybe what we want to do is visualize some of this. And it turns out that the data frame comes in with some built-in visualization. So for example, this plot function or method takes a kind keyword argument. I could tell it to create a bar chart from this. Okay, so if I execute this, I'm going to get an error. And the reason why is because even though Pandas has its own visualization API, it's still dependent upon matplotlib, which is what everybody uses in Python for visualization. And that's pretty easy to work on here. I can simply say pip install matplotlib, and this will take a few seconds, so I'll speed up the video. All right, with that done, I can simply rerun this cell here. And we will get a bar chart. Now, this is kind of hard to see. So there's, so there's a number of different styles that you can use inside of matplotlib. So I'm going to insert a cell up here by clicking the code button for the button here to create a new code cell. And then what I'll do is I'll say from matplotlib import style, not string, but style. And then I'm going to hit alt enter. And what alt enter will do is execute the current cell and then insert a new cell below. I'm going to say style dot available. And again, alt enter. And it's going to give me a list of all the styles that are available uh, for this installation. Now I've played around with these and I happen to know that Seaborn is going to work rather well. So I will just say style.use and then say Seaborn. This time shift enter to execute the current cell and move to the next one and then shift enter again. And you can see now it's much easier to read. Something else that we might want to do is this is it's we might want to see everything in order. So the data frame has a sort values. And then I'm going to sort by the column line items again. And if I hit shift enter, we'll see everything in ascending order. But if I want to see the largest first, I can say ascending, ascending equals false. Or what I could do is I could simply say, hey, maybe I want just the top 10. This again returns a data frame. 
All right, there are other types of charts that you can create uh, very easily using map, uh, not map plot, well, using matplotlib, but also using pandas. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste it down here. And I'm going to create, this time, I'm going to create a pie chart. And with the pie chart, we have to give it a column for the Y value. And in this case, it's still going to be the line items. And I'll do a shift enter. And now we can see the top 10 visualized as a pie chart. And this legend over here is in the way. You can move it around. But I'll just legend equals false just to get rid of it. There we go. So those are a few of the basic things that you can do to create visualizations uh, using pandas inside of Jupyter Notebook.